What's new crew? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Cassandra and I found this article and we are going to be talking about 10 things to stop buying headed into 2023. I thought it was interesting and I do these videos every once in a while where I talk about articles and we kind of go down the list and we talk about different things. So let's go ahead and do that today and we're just going to hop right into number one. The first thing it wants you to stop buying is everyday plastics, which is absolutely fantastic. So not only are plastics eating away at the planet, but they're unnecessary and they waste a lot of money, which is totally true. So it's talking about even things that I didn't even really think about off the top of my head when it says plastics, but it's talking about, of course, water bottles, which I think everybody knows, but like little Ziploc baggies, straws, and it's basically saying to find non-disposable products that you can wash and reuse, which I think is totally true. And we, all of my kids have water bottles that they carry around. We also invested in some of these straws. And the thing about straws usually is I feel like they never get clean, but these ones actually completely open and then you can really get in there and wash them, make sure there's nothing in there. And then they just have these little claspy bits here and you just kind of pinch the straw back together and it works great. They, they work really, really well. We've had these for a long time too. I'm going to say oh, probably two years and they, they've still held up really good. My kids use these every single day. Of course, I do use a lot of Ziploc baggies, but not in like my day-to-day -day life, more for when we're preserving foods and stuff, I'll put them in Ziploc baggies and stuff. We did finally invest in a food saver, but of course, when you're vacuum sealing things, you're also um, vacuum sealing them in like little plastic bags. So that doesn't really change much, but that's just part of the preservation thing for us. But it still prevents a lot less plastic waste in the long run, me preserving my own food. When you're thinking about all the plastic that produce comes home in from the grocery store, it is far less than what I do in a full year, preserving our own food from the garden and things like that and getting it in the freezer, way less than what would come out of a grocery store. So I feel a little less guilty about that. Number two actually kind of surprised me and it's paper and printer ink. And it was saying that it's just talking about how we are basically in the age of digital revolution, which is totally true. You can pretty much do everything online nowadays, emails and um, scanning facts and all sorts of things like that. Really, there isn't a whole lot of need for paper copies. We do use our printer a lot less now than we did like when we, me and my husband first got married a couple years ago, we use it way less, but there are just things, you know, printer and printer paper. We do try to limit it though because printer ink is crazy expensive. Why is it so expensive and printer paper in general? So we definitely try to limit it because yowza, that's a lot. But I do have to print a lot of paper for like my Girl Scout meetings, school things that come home with the kids or have to go back with the kids. So. We limit it, but yeah, definitely. But that was one that kind of surprised me. I don't think I've ever seen that on a list like this before, so it was cool to come across something new. This third one completely surprised me. I had no idea that Hallmark did this, but it's saying birthday and greeting cards. And apparently it's saying sites like Hallmark and American Greetings have um, e-cards that you can choose from and they will actually email them, which I had no idea was a thing. I really don't know if that's accurate, but that's what this blog says, so we'll see. But if it does do that, that's pretty cool. I don't hate me. I usually don't do cards or green cards or anything like that, except for rare occasions. Um, some of my husband sends Christmas cards and like holiday cards to army buddies through the mail, just a way for them to stay in touch. I also do them for people who I know really, really, really like treasure them and they keep them and they enjoy them. Um, however, typically like for my nieces and nephews birthdays um, Graduations different things like that. I usually do books instead number four is app subscriptions I think this is one that comes up on every single list But this is saying that on average Americans spend an average of hundred and thirty three dollars per month more on subscriptions and unused memberships Which is wild. Can you imagine what you would do with an extra like hundred and thirty five dollars a month? That's crazy to think about that you're just throwing it out the door because it's unused. And I think it's a lot easier these days to forget about subscriptions and memberships that you have because it's so easy to sign up for them. Especially because I know like with our Roku and like Roku remote and stuff, it saves your card information. So you don't even have to type in your card information. It's way too convenient to just be like, yeah, let's add on this TV service or let's add on this TV service. And then before you know it, you have like 10 streaming platforms and you really only are gravitating towards one or two. Hang on, we have a Paw Patroller coming through. I talk about 
about this a lot, how we will rotate through our subscription services. But we pretty much always keep Netflix because it's the one that will work when the other ones won't. Number five is your daily coffee drinks. This one triggers people. Sometimes I get comments and people get mad at me for things I say about your daily coffee drinks. I'm so sorry. I totally get it, your daily coffee drinks. I don't work a normal job and when I did, I can definitely admit that I definitely stopped at a gas station or something on my way to work or on my way home from work, depending on my shift, and would pick up something <laughs> heading into work or coming back home. So I totally get that. When you're out and about, it's a lot more tempting versus myself, uh, where I don't go out and my nearest coffee station, like coffee house or my nearest Starbucks or anything like that is 25 minutes from my house. So for me to drive, 40 minutes round trip or 55, 50 minutes round trip for a cup of coffee is not convenient for me when I can just brew it myself at home whenever I want, you know, in a matter of two minutes. So I get that. But this is saying, by pocketing the $3.50 for a coffee each day and investing it instead into a low cost Roth IRA, you have an estimated $106,000 after 30 years. And when you think about that, it's crazy because you think $3.50 is literally nothing, but then you're thinking about it long-term and something like that, and what it could be, what it could be turned into is wild. Me and my husband were just actually talking about this for our kids, and when it comes to bank accounts, because if you're new, we just had a brand new baby, and getting her an account open and getting something started for her and kind of doing the calculations and what that would turn into by the time she turned 18. Number six is cleaning supplies. And this is one I dove into hard in 2022. This is a gallon size mason jar. All I had in here were orange peels and vinegar. You can see I need to make another batch. I'm just about, I have a little bit left, but I basically used this for everything. I have a second channel. I don't talk about it much. I'll link it down below. It's called Teach Me How to Clean. I just posted a video over there on how to clean your entire bathroom with nothing but vinegar. It's amazing, but by diluting your vinegar in orange peels, limes, uh, lemons, you can do apple, kind of whatever you want, it really helps dilute the vinegar smell. It smells a little bit less pungent. Definitely smells like oranges, and the longer you let it sit, the more it's gonna smell like oranges and less it'll smell like vinegar. I recommend letting it sit for at least two weeks in a cool dark spot. I keep mine under my kitchen sink. And this is basically like an all purpose spray. I use it on my windows, my countertops, my stainless steel. I use it as a duster. I This is kind of the only thing I use. I'm basically just gonna use up the rest of like my Windex that I have because I buy my cleaning supplies in bulk previously. And once those are gone, the only thing I'm gonna be purchasing moving toilet bowl cleaner because I just think that that's a little bit better of an option right now. Uh, vinegar and Dawn dish soap and then the stuff I use to clean my floors like pine salt and baking soda But I pretty much only clean now with vinegar baking soda Dawn dish soap um, Like I said my toilet bowl cleaner and that's pretty much it number seven is brand new clothing And it's basically just talking about thrifting and how you can get things on Facebook marketplace on eBay different things like that instead of buying clothes brand new which of course is great for your pocket, it's great for the environment because less is heading into the landfill. So, lots to think about there. According to a report by secondhand clothing platform ThreadUp, sales were expected to jump to 119 billion, bit like billion with a B, in 2022, up from 96 billion in 2021. Wow. And they're estimated to, it to grow to 99 billion by 2026, that is wild. Good for them. Wow, that's wild. But yeah, I think we all see things like thread up in um, different like sponsored ads or posts that we see when we're scrolling Facebook or Instagram or over on YouTube. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Number eight is multivitamins. And to be honest, I don't know nearly enough about multivitamins and supplements to even comment on this. So we're just gonna kinda skip by it. We do take vitamins. We do all take a multivitamin. Um, my husband likes his supplements, especially when he's on a fitness kick, so we'll see what happens. My husband definitely loves his fish oil, so I don't know, I'm gonna leave it there. The next one I also don't know nearly anything about, not nearly enough to talk about in a video, and that's travel insurance. Number 10 is cable TV, and honestly, this is another one that hits almost every single list, and I kind of think it's outdated at this point. I don't think anyone like under the age probably 45 maybe 50 
has cable TV anymore. I think it's definitely something that's dying out and honestly, I don't even really think it's gonna be something that they're gonna offer for too much longer. I say in like probably 10, 20 years, cable TV isn't even gonna be a thing anymore and absolutely everything is gonna be streaming. That's just my personal opinion. I think that's one that a ton of people agree on. Getting rid of it saves a lot of money. As long as you don't ditch your cable TV and then get every single streaming service so it's like you have cable TV because you have so many options. So I definitely say be smart about it. But yeah, I, that's one I kind of wish they'd stop putting on those lists because I think it's something that everybody knows now and nobody really has, so. But that's that. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to hang out with me. Let me know down below what is something that you're gonna try to stop. Okay, I'll be right there. Let me know down below something that you're gonna give up heading into 2023 and I will catch you guys in another video. Bye. Everybody just do your thing. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up.